ever since legendary cpo came into rise of kingdoms i've gotten a lot of players asking me should they invest in cpo or should they invest in guan yu now this question mainly comes from new players who are just seeing these commanders for the first time maybe they're just entering the season of conquest and they've watched a ton of videos on youtube they see how much everybody loves guan yu but then they also see how good cpo is and then like okay well which one should i invest in first and realistically the question guan yu or cpo isn't a valid question because the answer is both the answer is Guan Yu primary, Scipio secondary. But if you're gonna get access to both of these commanders at the same time, which one should be a priority? Seeing as how both of these commanders are exceptionally good, and realistically, I do still think that Guan primary, Scipio secondary is the best open field march in the game right now, and is, is definitely the best open field infantry pair right now. And I know somebody with a super high IQ is gonna be like, oh, my Boudicca YSG can tear that march to shreds. I, I, I'm, I'm sure that you can, but it, realistically, best bang for your buck in most scenarios is going to be Guan Yu with Scipio. Now, if you're a brand new player entering Season of Conquest for the first time, when we're considering which of these two you want to expertise first, or at least invest in first, we have to consider what do you have already, because that's going to determine who you're pairing it with. And honestly, if you have been following most guides on YouTube, you probably will have an expertise YSG and you probably will have an expertise Alexander by the time you enter season of conquest. If that's not the case, then I mean, I honestly, if you want comment down below, if I should just make an entire new video talking about the legendary investment order for free to play players, because if you don't have Alexander by season of conquest, he kind of just gets replaced by CPO for free to play players, right? Like at some point free to play players are doing Guan with Alex. But now if you can save all those Alex sculptures and put them in CPO, then you might as well just do go on CPO. It's just a better March, but that's a topic for another video. I'm going to assume that you have an expertise to Alexander going into the season of conquest for the first time. Now, a lot of older players remember when Guan Yu came into the game and he's been in the game for such a long time that, you know, logically people may think, oh, well you do Guan Yu first. He's, he's like you get access to him first but realistically he's a season of conquest commander just like cpo so if you have access to both of them at the same time i think the correct answer is to expertise cpo first now you might be saying omniarch hold up whoa that is a big statement right there everybody loves guan yu guan yu is the best open field commander yada 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 i'm sure i, I understand and i'm with you i agree i actually recently went back and expertise my guan yu even though he was 5255 because I just wanted to get that extra skill damage with CPO shield that that's literally it but if you're a free-to-play player and you're new to the game you have to consider a couple of things when picking which of these two to expertise first and I think the real thing is which one is a better pair with Alexander the Great because realistically if you're going to invest in both of them anyway it's just that period in between the two expertise it, it, that matters and what you're going to have at that point is Alexander the Great and I personally think there is more synergy with Alexander the Great and CPO than there is with Guan Yu and Alexander the Great why is this well first of all all of CPO skills take effect in the open field and that is not true for Guan Yu Guan Yu has a really nice 2000 damage factor aoe with three seconds silence he gives you 30 percent of infantry attack a small conditional healing factor 15 percent march speed and you also have a 50 percent chance of dealing a nice additional damage factor to a target if you expertise him yes he does gain extra skill damage with alex's shield which is some nice synergy there but again the second skill is the problem here if you're a free-to-play player or really anybody using guan yu in the open field right this applies to everybody uh, you're getting no value out of this skill in the open field whereas if you look at Scipio he also has a three target 2000 damage factor AoE which is one of the best things about Guan Yu and Scipio has that as well now he doesn't get the silence but he does get a really nice 30 percent health reduction for three seconds which I mean if you think about it it's hard to say which is better I think the silence is maybe slightly better depending on who you're fighting and the scenario but a 30 percent health reduction is really nice and his second skill here gives you more infantry attack than Guan Yu's third skill, which also gives you infantry attack. They also give the same amount of March speed, except instead of the small healing factor that Guan Yu has, 
Scipio actually gives you a little bit of extra March speed in the open field when you are outside of Alliance territory. And honestly, that extra March speed is super good for infantry. They're very slow. If you get caught in enemy territory, hopefully that extra 10% will help you in some scenarios. A lot of times you're hit by a Saladin, by a Richard, by something that slows you down. And unfortunately you probably will still get caught. But the fact that you have that bonus March speed on CPO on the second skill is great. And again, straight up. 10% more attack point for point. Like you just get more stats moving on to the third skill. This is going to give you 20% of infantry health when you're engaged in combat and you have a chance of dealing 1500 damage factor. Now that's over time, which sort of makes up for the fact that he doesn't have the extra damage that Guan Yu does on the fourth skill. Now, the downside of this is that it's over time instead of an instant hit. And also it has an eight second cooldown with only a 10% chance of happening. Whereas for Guan Yu, this has a 50% chance of happening every single time that you fire off your AOE without cooldown, right? So I think this is a better skill than the damage over time here on CPO. But again, this is an extra free 1500 damage factor that you're going to get on top of the 20% of health. And guys, Guan Yu does not gain any more stats. He doesn't have any extra defense. He doesn't have any extra health. He just gets the 30% of infantry attack and that's it here. You're getting a much more premium stat than infantry attack on top of the fact that you are already getting more attack straight up. And then finally, Scipio has a fourth skill here where you have a 50% chance of reducing the skill damage you take by 30%, which is huge by the way, because AOE skill damage has been the meta in rise of kingdoms for like two years now at this point, if not more, and you're going to give three shields in the open field, which is incredibly good. You can't even compare this to the fourth skill on Guan because he doesn't have four skills that work in the open field, right? This skill only works in rallies. So right out of the gate, not only is he getting more attack points, he just has an extra skill. He just has, he does an extra thing, which is really, really good. Now on top of that, Scipio is more tanky than Guan Yu. And that's kind of what you need as a free to play player, right? You are, it's going to be really hard for you to compete in the open field. And so if you're only bringing one March, uh, you might as well bring CPO with Alex until you get your hands on Guan Yu. Now, if you've already started investing in Guan Yu as a free to play player, that's fine. He's a great investment. And I do think that Guan CPO is the way to go to it. So eventually you are going to want both of these commanders, but we're not even done there because when CPO's expertise, you just straight up get 10% more skill damage. And you're also going to get 30% more rage when the target is silenced. And guys, I know that this has amazing synergy with Guan Yu, but guess what? Probably everybody else in the open field is using Guan Yu as well, right? It doesn't say that you have to inflict the silence. It's just if you're hitting a silence target. And again, a lot of players are going to have Guan Yu already, and you're going to gain benefit of everybody else's Guan Yu uh, with this CPO expertise, right? So it's a, it's a win-win all around. And I think that going CPO first is going to give you the best bang for your buck until you can save up enough sculptures to unlock Guan Yu. Now, if you're in the position right now, and this is very important, so please pay attention. Okay. If you are in the position right now where you were just entering season of conquest and you're expertise in CPO, what I want you to do after you expertise CPO is hold on to your sculptures. Do not start immediately pumping them into Guan Yu. Hold on to your sculptures until you have enough sculptures to get Guan Yu to a meaningful point, either 5155 or expertise. Don't put a single sculpture into Guan Yu until you've saved up enough for you to immediately get to either 5155 or expertise. And the reason for that is because based on rumors that I can't confirm or deny, there's a chance that the developers of Rise of Kingdoms may actually skip the leadership cycle in the next upcoming commander release. Again, this is all speculation, but in the event that we do actually skip leadership, that means that the next commanders that come out are going to be cavalry commanders. And typically after we see cavalry, we usually see infantry after that. So what happens in the event that the next infantry cycle releases a commander that's just like let's say it literally just does more damage and also silences like it's not unreasonable to assume that there's that the next set of infantry commanders could also just release guan 2.0 and make guan irrelevant now i don't think guan will ever really be irrelevant just like ysg is never really going to be irrelevant right there may be a slightly better option but if you've already expertise at ysg or guan yu like you're probably going to keep using them forever but i think that's another reason why you want to do cpo first because i think the probability that Guan Yu gets outclassed in the future 
is higher than the probability that Scipio gets outclassed in the future, right? Scipio is brand new. He's shiny. He's golden. He is a premier and a prime example of power creep in the game. Guan Yu came out a few years ago, right? If we take a look at, I got him at the beginning of 2020. So we're almost three years since I got him. And I don't even think I got him right away. I might have, I don't remember exactly, but what's more likely to get power crept out of the game. Someone that's three years old or somebody that recently came out. I think the answer is Guan. So hopefully if you're a brand new free to play player that clears it up for you, go CPO first, pair him with Alexander until you have enough sculptures to bring your Guan straight to where you want him to. In that time period if he gets power crept out great you've saved up your sculptures if not then boom you can bring guan right to where you want him and you'll have a guan cpo and you'll be golden and you'll have a great march in the meantime in cpo primary alex secondary now you could of course do alexander primary of C cpo secondary it's up to you um i love the support tree on cpo honestly i think it's very very good i also think that Alexander being primary in season of conquest is a basically a red flag, right? People are going to see Alexander primary and think, oh, that's probably a free to play player. That's probably somebody who doesn't have a better alternative to a primary, right? In season of conquest, you don't usually see Alexander primary. And I think, you know, it, for me, at least when I see an Alexander primary, I assume that it's a free to play player or somebody's third, fourth, fifth March that they don't have great gear on. Right. Because honestly, I don't love the attack tree on Alexander. I just don't, I know that, you know, it's great on Attila for Alexander. I don't love it uh, because he just, he's not as tanky as he once was, right? He, he just isn't. So realistically, I would prefer CPO primary for the support tree but again it, it's really up to you and the fact that you have a choice here is great with Guan Yu you don't have a choice right if you go Guan Yu with Alex you you have to use Guan Yu primary right that's like written in his first skill here right he has to be primary pretty much so yeah the fact that you'll get that choice with Alex CPO is nice and you can maybe change it up depending on what you need again if you want me to make an entire video talking about the investment order for free to play players now at the end of 2022 go ahead and comment down below if you enjoyed this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton us youtubers don't just say that like it literally actually helps subscribe to the channel if you're new here and click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace